Hello, this is Palico Padge, and welcome back to another episode of Padge Plays YOLO Edition with the game Chainsaw Warrior by Auroch Games. I think that's how you say it. Auroch? Auroch? Or we're going to go with Auroch. Auroch Games. Indeed, indeed. This was originally a single player board game released by the Games Workshop in 1987 and has been re released back in 2013 as a single player RNG game is the best way of, exp of explaining it really although there's dice in it obviously being on the computer it's not like you can roll those dice and get a physical feel for it so it is an RNG game but it has a pretty interesting concept I thought it was worth a YOLO episode and seeing as I picked up this and its updated expansion Lords of the Night which has just had a big update for like well one pound fifty which is what two euros about two dollars i thought hell it's worth an episode this isn't a game damn it this is an investment this gets me time on the channel so i thought we'd give it a will um i've played for a couple of times it's pretty hard i'll say that it is a pretty hard game to play but we'll just see how we get on you know what's the worst that can happen we can all die to the darkness which is what we're against uh all run out of time and uh, be consumed by the darkness. So either way, there are there is a darkness involved here. So uh, bring a torch, everybody. Let's crack on. Now, as you can see, we have three difficulties here. Even easy mode is difficult. So for the sake of getting a decent length episode and hopefully being able to show you as much as I can, we're going to play it on easy. But by all means, go out there, spend your two dollars, euros, one pound forty, go crazy. Go medium, go hard, whatever, whatever. We're going on easy. News at six for Thursday, October 30th, 2032. Reports are coming in of a major emergency in the heart of New York City. Within the last two hours, it has been revealed that the Army Special Forces Unit has sealed off a wide area around the old municipal buildings in the heart of Manhattan, and several violent explosions have been heard. Oh, shit, son. No explanation has yet been given for either these or the isolation of the area, but... 40 minutes ago, the head of ASFU, Colonel Miller, announced there would be a press conference at 2100 hours. What? Sir, the colonel sent me. I'm not interested. He, he's, he's never always English here. He says you owe him a big favour. You don't have to remind me. Not after all these years. Oh, I love those buzz kits. Closing months of the year. War. Enemy territory. Something went badly wrong. Me talking. I've been injured before, but this time... They rebuilt me, made me more than a man, took away my fear, just cut it out. Sent me back again and again. After all those impossible missions, I don't know what to know. Stow it, soldier! Where's Miller? I don't want to know even. It, it, it moves quick. The, you, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys can read it. I'm, I'm, you know, there's, there's me, you know, talking over the top of it, stalling. No need. This is the press notes. We're being told that people are being evacuated from the area around the hall. For many years, one of the centers of civic government in the city. The army is giving no further details, but of course, we'll be bringing you more information as it becomes available, when it becomes available, giving it straight to you. Come on in, soldier. Long time no see. Ever heard of something called spatial warping? No, never. Me neither, till yesterday. It's a state of physics. A gap opens up to somewhere. Oh. Last night, a major spatial warp appeared in downtown New York. We sent in a squad. A dozen corpses. Corpse-like creatures. Bizarre shape changes and rats everywhere. We haven't recovered the bodies. Okay, that's that. You've got some people to meet. Come on. <laughs> there you go. There's mitigating death for you. That is oblivion there. Now, get off into it. Go! <laughs> Meet our expert, Dr. Marks and Captain Johnson, who led the second squad. Glad you could make it, sir. Get kitted out while these guys brief you. Do you believe in ghosts, soldier? What you call ghosts are beings from other dimensions. Linking to our through spatial warping. Such occurrences rarely let through more than one or two. Conditions here aren't suited to them, and they soon die. This time they've come in a force, directed by a greater power which provides energy and intelligence. The first squad reported facing a monstrous shadowy figure, a giant being of pure darkness. This darkness is emitting so much power, the whole of Manhattan will soon be on something other. This is really bad news. Is that it will happen in a little over an hour's time? But we've, we've frozen at 60 minutes 
43 seconds. I don't think we should play any further. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Next. When Washington got wind of this, they wheeled in the big guns and set all this up. In a panic, they ordered the first raid, which with the results you saw. After that, they let us experts have our own way. The boffins called in an airstrike, but as the jets were banking over Long Island, we had to abort. Sensors indicate a very powerful radioactive source. One hit and... Next, nerve gas was dropped. Certain Johns... Captain Johnson led the cap team in. Ten men lost! I was lucky, I'll heal. You're the only one who can stop the darkness now. We all trust you to do better than the best. It'll be dark in about half an hour. I don't even know what I'm saying now. Remember, you only have 60 minutes to save New York. That kind of looks like the tower from uh, Ghostbusters. Hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> we're into the game. <sighs> Time to create a Chainsaw Warrior. You will roll dice, referred to as D6, to generate his five core stats and then select his equipment for this desperate mission. Roll dice for endurance. This is to determine how well Chainsaw Warrior can resist zombie venom and radiation. The higher the number, the better. So because we're on easy, we get to roll 1d6 and get plus 18 on top of whatever we roll. As you can see, if we go to medium or hard, that does get reduced somewhat. Or, well, not so much reduced as left more to chance. Because if you think about it here, we've got 1d6 plus 18, which is three sixes. Whereas here, it's, it's four times a multiples of six, depending on what the dice roll. So... It's just maxing out dice rolls to give you the best chance. That's what we like about this. Roll it. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Natural six. It's going to be a good playthrough. I'm actually be able to complete this, he says. Roll dice for wounds. This determines how much combat damage Chainsaw Warrior can take. The higher the number, the better. So this is D 1d6 plus 12. Okay. Six. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Roll dice for hand-to-hand. -hand. Uh, this indicates how good a close combat chainsaw warrior is. The higher the number, the better. And we get 3d6 and then plus 6. All right, so roll 3d6. Roll 3d6. The highest value is used plus 6. So it's only the one dice, I believe. So let's get a 6. Hey. So that's 12. Nice. Roll dice for marksman skill. Uh, this is... Oh, this indicates how good a shot chainsaw warrior is. So... Roll well, 1d6, 1 is minus 2, 2 is minus 1, 3 and 4 is 0, 5 is plus 1, 6 is plus 2. Roll well, 3d6 and the highest value is used. Okay, well, I'll just get see how we go, I guess. Roll! 6, I'll take 6. So we've got plus 2 on that. Nice. Roll well, dice and reflexes, determines our fast chance for warriors reacting to danger. The higher the better. So highest value plus 5. Oh, not so good that time. So we got eight there. Okay, okay. Roll and die for your skill. One is marksman, two is endurance, three is agility, four is strength, five is climbing, and six is hiding. Uh, I think strength or endurance would be best for here. So we're looking for a two or a four. Boom! I'll take strength. So that puts our hand to hand combat up. Nice. Roll dice for equipment points. This determines how many points for equipment chains Warrior has to select from. Well, 3d6, the highest value is used, plus 2. Okay, he's hoping for 6. Ha ha ha! You can now spend your equipment points on a maximum of 13 items. Weapons displaying lower stats are easy to hit with. You start with the laser lance equipped, which you must take with you. Now, the laser lance is the only weapon which is going to destroy the darkness. So we can't use it all up or lose it. Or else we are scuppered. So, let's see what we got. So, we have... Eight points remaining. And there's 13 items we can choose from. Now, everything costs different amounts of points. Hand-to-hands uh, -hand tend to be one point. As you can see, there's a fair few different ones here. We then have your standard gun, which costs two. Again, all the way through those. We'll go for these in a second. We then have heavy weapons, if you want to go loco. They cost three. Then we have devices, which is uh, accessories for certain things. We then have clothing, which tends to be protective items. And then we have special, which is your laser lance, which we've got already, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, you can have whatever combination of these you want. You can, for instance, have eight one-pointed items if you want. Or you can go a little bit crazy and go for, say, two 
heavy weapons and then a, uh, a two pointer of some sort um, I think the way we're going to play it because we're good at hand to hand and marksman uh, we, we can take the chainsaw which I think is good so that adds uh, three to HH rating HH to -H rating removes doors as well on eight or more which is not too bad uh, the yivers tend to be sort of dilutions of the chainsaw so you've got the stunnox which is balanced against mutants and meat machines uh, throwing nets which gets you through things a lot, uh, quicker time grenades so you can skip the uh, the opponent and uh, go to the next one um, are we going to play it nice and simple for our first playthrough uh, we could do knife if we you get to throw that no we're gonna do the chainsaw so chainsaw is good so we now we get seven points so continue on that oh and then we want to go to gun now guns as you can see depending on which gun you have they hit different enemies at different straps which you know different guns make sense as it stands i think the blaster which is like the very basic gun is my best friend the rest are okay like for instance it's it's generally pretty good it's sort of medium numbers on all enemies meat machine hits a little bit harder when you come to the others like an automatic rifle which you think would be better it's actually not that much better at all in fact i would argue that it's worse and it has less uses so the automatic rifle is pointless we then have the zombies uh, the shotgun the zombies rubbish against meat machine rubbish against submachine guns same thing you know I, I don't think it's a question really it has to be a blaster it has to be a blaster um heavy weapons i'm not too fussed about generally i found it's better to try and mitigate the damage than it is try to kill things quicker because if the dice rolls are against you the dice rolls are against you so with that being said i am going to take the body armor well that leaves me four uh we shall have the helmet three the ir goggles so we don't lose anything when it gets to dark i'll explain about the darkness in a second two do i want any devices oh i think the other thing i took was a where is it there was a lock pick set yes i'm gonna have that as well so we we can get through locked doors there was another thing i'm missing i can't remember what it was it allows me to see zombies i think yeah it was the heat detector or was it no because you have to use that before flipping it it was something like that uh let's have a look why well, cut a lock picks it oh here we go uv emitter never need never check for wandering zombies whilst in operation awesome and i think that's just kitted out so we've got the chainsaw we've got the blaster we've got we've got we've got we've got somewhere the lock pick set the uv emitter the body armor and the helmet now the only the only thing which i might do is it, it's a choice between the helmet and the, and the and the rad fiber suit i think i don't think any of the others are worth doing the ir goggles i need yeah that'll do that'll do that's a good that's a good mix and i think i think i think i think that is us ready to rock yes let's crack on you have 60 minutes of game time to save new york before it it is drawn into the void each turn represents 30 seconds most actions take one turn for example a round of combat or reloading a weapon takes 30 seconds of game time so game time clock see top left shudonk up there when it reaches zero the game is over and the darkness has won which is how i've lost both times i've played it and then we have a day night indicator also top left once over 30 minutes of in-game time have passed it will be dark and unless you have items to help you things will get tougher hence us getting the ir vision type things so and never can sneak up on us essentially which is good to be honest with you this is the best roll i've had for stats on easy so far so here's hoping we get through this game and uh, it is just a case of clicking next flipping over cards and trying to battle it as best we can 
It's not the most visceral of games to play, but it's interesting to see how far we can go with it. So, with that being said, off we go. The cards are split into two decks and Darkness resides somewhere in the second deck. You must fight your way through all of the first deck before there is a chance of encountering him. Moving through each deck in the least possible game time is the key to victory. Only the Laser Lance or the Implosion Vest can kill the Darkness. Winning is not going to be easy. Okay, so this is the enemy house card. In general, if you shoot and kill an enemy first, it cannot damage you. However, you'll need to pass a reflex test to shoot first. If not killed by a shot, you'll need to enter H to H or hand to hand. Each enemy has the following. So there's a hand to hand strength. The higher it is, the more deadly the enemy. We need to know its name, the escape symbol, so whether we can escape after a round has been played or not, and then the description of the zombie. But we shall read at that as and when they come up. To progress through the game, press on the card back to turn it over. Actions available to you are displayed on the right hand side and change depending on the current card, your skills and equipment. All rolls are made using a six sided die. You may use the equipment button, see middle right to view your equipment. When green it is active and can be pressed, when grey it is currently inactive. Some items are used automatically, others you need to select to deploy. See the text on each item card for more information. So everything we've chosen should be automatic. We shouldn't have to worry about going onto the equipment screen at all unless we pick up any equipment whilst we're out and about. At the bottom of the screen is your endurance. As the mission progresses, you will encounter venom, infected enemies such as zombies and radioactive traps and enemies such as mutant things. Any level of venom indication and radiation resorption is indicated by your endurance bar bottom of the screen. So there's two little items down here just flashing. As the venom and radiation builds up it will creep up here as soon as it reaches 24 we are deed we are deed so we want to keep that down as much as possible killing darkness and saving new york will not be easy the odds are against you and many will die before this is over that's including us several, several times when victory comes through know that you will rank amongst the elite few time to move out soldier and this is it we are clicking on cards we've got one in 54 on the first deck before we get to the more important darkness pack you encounter a trap Test reflexes, adding two to roll. If you fail, roll 1d6 plus one and take that many wounds. Roll 1d6 for every item of equipment on six, the item is broken. Not a good start with mine. It's not a good start. So we've got a reflex test. So if we roll equal or under six, we avoid the trap. Oh, <laughs> oh, got you, got you. Right, let's carry on. Continue your mission. Chaos agent. Very fast, unless a device negates, go straight to hand to hand. Won't wound every time he hits, lose an item of equipment. That is rubbish. Okay, let's click it. Hand to hand. So we've got our chainsaw selected. 10, 9, 8. Your combat skill is so much higher than the enemy score that they can't win. Press next to overpower them and move on. So this is where I get a little bit confused because to me, that is 9, 17. And we've got 16. Oh, but hang on. Don't we get plus two on the chainsaw? Oh, plus three. Ah, that makes sense. Muffs. Muffs is great. So, next one. Dump. Ooh. You arrive at the next encounter in your desperate mission to save the city. Take any one clothing card or, re or a refill or a spare clip for any item you already have. Can I take a clothing card? Um, no. I thought you said I could take a cloven card. Take any one cloven card or a refill of a spare clip. I don't have... Oh, take items. There we go. Uh, <laughs> right, so we can choose from a uh, rad fiber suit, steel gloves, which is hand-to-hand. -hand. Rad fiber might be good. Implosion vest, not too fussed about. We'll take the fiber suit. Protects us against radiation. That is a good start. So next, zombie. Uh, plus eight. So unless... it. I, we can do hand-to-hand -hand and pretty much kill this straight off. A foul undead zombie staggers towards you. Flesh hanging from its decaying body and hatred burning in its eyes. Fight for your life. Should be pretty simple. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Next. Wandering zombie appears on a roll of six. Uh, this is a clear room. You may use this space to reload a weapon. There is one in six chance of, one, of a wandering zombie will arrive, interrupting any action taken. Now, this isn't going to happen because we've got the uh, detector to de uh, detect any wandering zombies. So, this automatically writes off these cards, which is good for us. There we go. No need to test wandering zombies because of the UV emitter. Awesome. 
Oh, razor wire this time. Unless you have wire cutters, lose a total of between one and three minutes. Test for a wanding zombie every 30 seconds. Uh, it takes you three minutes to crawl through the razor wire. You may not escape any wandering zombies that might find you. Nice. Um, I think we're good. Chaos agent attacks with venom-coated knives. If he wounds you, you are infected with zombie venom. Well, that's not very good. Uh, only 10, though. So we should be okay chainsawing to death. 17. We're good. We're good. Move onwards. Oh, we're clear again. Tippity top. On again. Another chaos agent. He's a knife throwing expert. Unless a device negates a die roll of five or six, he hits you for one rune. Goes straight to hand to hand. Oh dear. Oh, that's a bad roll, son. Bad roll. Next. Locked door. Unless you have a lock pick, you must smash the door with a weapon to find or find another route by reshuffling five cards from the discard pack into the current deck. Another reason why we choose the lock pick set. Nice. Thanking you much, Lee. Next one. Oh, we got the rat pap. Uh, it, if hit by them, they inflict rabid bites, causing two wounds. We're good. We're good. No, not with rolls like that, friend. Boom. Next. Wandering zombie. So we'll just click on through that nice and quickly. A zombie. Now, only eight on him. I think we're going to be okay. <gasps> Press the long button there. Hand to hand. That's what he meant to press. Yeah, nothing to worry about. Next. Ambush. You are attacked by 1d6 of wandering zombies. You can attempt to shoot one, but then must attack the others in hand to hand. Well, I guess it depends on how many he's going to roll out. Oh, no need to test wandering zombies because of the item. Oh, awesome. I don't think you've worked on those. Continue your mission. Uh, oh, we're going to dump. Take any one device card or a refill or a spare clip. Let's take a device card. Right, so we've got flash bombs. Use after dark. Use at start of hand-to-hand -hand combat either to give a plus three hand-to-hand -hand rating for that combat or to escape automatically. Not too fussed by that. Cats. Attached to any gun, MTM rocket or flamethrower. Add plus two to marksman and plus one to lucky shots. You'll be prompted to attach to a valid weapon if selected. Okay. Uh, torch allows you to see in the dark, negating any hand-to-hand -hand modifier and gives you a plus one in hand-to-hand -hand rating against zombies and rats. Sonic Amplifier. With this, you need never test reflexes to shoot a zombie opponent and may avoid cave-in trap. Look for the warning signal as it must be used before flipping a card. Uh, TDD, the Temporal Disturbance Detector, means you never have to test reflexes to shoot darkness. Mm, could be useful. Heat Detector. With this, you don't have to test reflexes to shoot rats or chaos agents and the Lunar Kit card is simply discarded without effect. I'll look for a warning. Metal detector with this, there's no need to test reflexes against the met uh, the meat machine. Avoid mines and wire traps by simply adding one minute to the time. Use before flipping card. Rope launcher. Use this card to bypass the chasm. When on a balcony, use this to climb out of danger. Adds 30 seconds and skip 1D of cards. Except darkness. The wire cutter. So you can cut through the wire and escape the net trap. Anti-rad pills. I don't think we're going to need that. Remote camera, use once only, add 30 seconds and take a peek at 2d6 of cards. The guy, you get, there's so many items here. When radioactive warning shows, use before flipped house card, avoids radioactive card. Medikit. Yeah. Teleporter, if you lose your laser lines, you can immediately leave to replace it. Flare gun, use after dark only. You may treat 1d6 of cards as clear. Use once only, can negate any locked door or wire trap. Then back to the start. I think we're going to go for the rope launcher. That caught me out on one of my playthroughs. I had to reshuffle a load of cards back into my deck, which was very annoying. So, uh, well, yes, on to the next. Uh, continue your mission. Zombie. Oh, he's a bit scary. It looks like he's wearing glasses, but it's actually just his eye sockets. Uh, and he has a hatred burning in his eyes. I bet he opens with that on Tinder. Right, so, H to H. Oh, you're not going to get anywhere with rolls like that, friend. Next. Oh, another zombie. Yeah, he's rubbish. Hand to hand. Oh, select. Onwards. Oh, that's that's good. That was good. I was worried about that one for a second. Next. Zombie. Oh, he's got his come to bed eyes on in that picture. Let's swipe him. Oh. Got to roll more than two. 
Oh, never doubted myself for a second. Next. Oh, we're through this one, okay. Next encounter. Oh, through again. Nice and clear. Awesome. Chaos Agent. Oh, Martial Arts Assassin. Reduce your marksmanship by three if shooting at him. And your HGH by three if you try to hit him. Well, we need to hit him, that's for sure. As it stands... 13 plus 3, 16. So if he rolls more than a 5, we're scuppered. Oh. Uh, roll more than 7. This is our first proper test. How's it going to go? How's it going to go? Rubbish. When you're drawn around of hand-to-hand, -hand, or sometimes when you're wounded, you may make a lucky shot. You have a 1 in 3 chance of getting off another shot before the next round of hand-to-hand. -hand. However, missing can be disastrous. Okay. Do we go for a lucky shot or do we just go for it? No, I don't think he's going to get that good a run again. Let's let's go straight into hand to hand with with the chainsaw, chop him up. Seven. Roll more than five. Okay. Boom. Uh, oh, we got a net. Unless you have the wire cutter, acid knife, chainsaw, or laser lance, roll one d six. We have the chainsaw. We have the chainsaw. Nice. Forwards. Oh, another empty room. Get through that quick enough. Oh, we found a first aid kit. Nice. Take this item and use when needed to heal 1d6 of wounds. On use, add 30 seconds and check for wandering zombies. If one arrives, you must fight and try again to use. Cool. Next. Clear again. Next. Oh, it's a cave in. Test your reflexes. If you fail, lose 1d6 of minutes and take one wound too. On the roll of six for each item of equipment. It was broken in the fall. Oh dear. So we've got a reflex test. So we're going to need to roll under eight to avoid the trap. That's very much under eight. Onwards. Tainted rat pack. Oh, they're getting harder. Uh, if hit by them, you take one wound and radiation damage as well. Let's, uh, let's keep chopping at them. Oh, nice. That teased me for a second. That's a teasing one. Get to move on, soldier. Okay, next one. The zombie baby. Uh, we have a foul and dead zombie staggers towards you. Oh dear. Um, what do we want to do? Hand to hand? Hand to hand. He's only weak, isn't he? He's only weak. He's much higher. Your deed. On to the next. The zombie. Again, another easy, easy one. Not worried about you at all. Next. Locked door, that's fine. We'll use our lockpick set on you. Here we go. Oh, a secret passage. Skip 2d6 of cards, choosing whether to skip each one before turning it over. What are we rolling? Six cards we're going to miss. Okay. So we're just going to bypass them all. Now, it's a case of weighing up whether it's worth going in because as soon as you enter into any of these cards you have to play the rest through and because we're trying to get to the end as quickly as possible it makes sense to just bypass them all anyway it's not often you get a nice card come up so you know generally you're okay for skipping the majority of them oh another cave in under eight please rubbish so it's cost us five minutes it also means you have lost a blaster and helmet no Okay, um, well, that's it then. That's it. Okay. Chaos Agent. Suicide Agent. Unless you shoot him, marksmanship minus one, take 1d6 wounds, then on a roll of five or six per item of equipment, it is broken. Oh, we could be majorly shafted here. Because we don't have a good... Oh, we have the lance pistol, don't we? Yeah, let's use the laser lance. Just go for it. Just go for it. You bastard. <coughs> the enemy is too fast for you. We both clash in hand-to-hand combat. Oh, dear. So, we didn't take any damage for that. Is that right? Okay, that's fine. Uh, trap. Sp spiked pick. No, I said that wrong. Spiked pit. Test your reflexes. Adding one to die roll. If you fail, roll 1d6. Okay, here we go. Oh! And there we go. We're into darkness, into the last 30 minutes. The ground opens up beneath you and you fall into the spike pit. You take zero wounds. 
It'll take you five minutes to escape unless you have the climbing skill. We do not. We do not. Uh, zombie. Oh, we're into hand to hand again now. Oh, here we go. Need one more than three. Come on, I've had some bad rolls. Tippity top. Skip through that. Chaos agent. Accompanied by two wandering zombies. They won't bother us because we have a detector. Oh. Or do we? Select an enemy to fight. You may shoot one before fighting the other in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Should we go for the strong zombie first? Let's get him out of the way. We're going to shoot him with the laser lance. Shoot him! Lower than an eight. Boom. Well, equal or higher than three to hit. Thank you. Thank you. Jeez. Right, then we'll take on the, the, the other zombie in hand to hand with our chainsaw. Our trusty, trusty chainsaw. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Uh, do you want to try a lucky shot? No, let's go straight into hand to hand. We have better rolls than him. Surely. There we go. And then onto the Chaos Agent with your damn dirty zombies. You like Michonne. So, yeah, good. Great. And let's just check our equipment. What are we actually missing? We've got our body armor, lockpick set, mad fiber suit, med kit, three lads. So, so it took out. It was, so it took three items then. I thought it took the two. That's bloody rubbish. Oh, it's going to get harder now. Ah, uh, wandering zombie. There is no wandering zombie. You can use your equipment or wait. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Uh, wandering zombie? No. Excellent. Next. Rat pack. We can take those down. They're pretty low. Not worried. Not worried. Next. We could do with another... Uh, oh. A net. Uh, next, we did it. We did. It. We're okay. Uh, current uh, zombie. He's a he's a weaken. That should be okay. Eight. Boom. There was no wandering zombie. That's tippity top. Rat pack. Another weak one. That's okie dokie, I guess. Oh, 16. Cheeky. No one in zombie. Time to get a move on. Ah, we've got a lot of pick set still. God bless it. So we might get onto the second deck here. Zombie. Pretty low. Oh, should be okay. Yeah. No chance. No chance. Another zombie. Same again. Same rule applies. Mm-hmm. This is it. Last card of the deck. It's a relatively easy zombie. We should be okay. Oh, more than three. Come on now. Half of the deck is now gone. From here onwards, expect to meet darkness on a turn of a card. Awesome. Clear. There is no wandering zombie. That's what we like. How long have we got there? 14 and a half minutes. Another clear one. Awesome. Oh, he's here! Current encounter! Darkness. Invulnerable except to laser lance or implosion vest. Cause two wounds if it hits you check for venom spread so we've got to shoot it we've got two shots on on darkness let's do this so reaching for your weapon you must roll equal or under eight to attack before the enemy closes in for hand to hand that's lower than an eight moving faster than your enemy you must now roll equal or higher than nine to hit plus my marksman modifier which is two so that's a plus equal or higher than nine to hit shouldn't that be seven Okay, anyway, we need nine, supposedly. That's six. You fail. Darkness is still there. Damn it. But I can't kill it with chainsaw, can I? Okay. He's got 20. He's got 20. Roll a 12 to draw. Oh, dear. My armor prevented a wound. Do we go for a lucky shot? We've only got one shot left of our equipment, haven't we? Where is he? Yeah, one use left. So, let's go to next. 
Do I hand to hand him again? Okay, all right, let's do it. Well, more than an eight. That's a seven. And we've been wounded. Okay, do I just go for a lucky shot? I think that's our best bet now we're out. So we can't reload here. Let's go for a lucky shot. Come on, lucky shot. Well, so, well, 1d6, you miss and shoot yourself. Two, your weapon is smashed. Three, you fail to shoot and take a wound. Four, you shoot and miss. Five, you shoot. Same chance as normal combat roll. Six, enemies killed. Go for the six. Go for the six. Oh, he gets a six. He gets a six. Oh, game over. Boom. You have defeated darkness. As his body fades from this realm, the city is saved. Until the next time a spatial rift opens. Boom. Whew. That was funky. I, I honestly thought we were a goner there. Honestly thought we were a goner. So that was my third playthrough through. That's the second time I've reached the second deck. I've never had the darkness pop up so early. I've, I've usually run out of time beforehand. And we take him out with a lucky shot. Oh, you can't write stories like that, I tell you. You can't write stories like that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that was exhilarating for me, pressing the next button several thousand times. But hey, it tells a little story. And hopefully I managed to keep it visceral enough for you to uh, keep you occupied for the 36 and a half minutes I've been playing. So there we go. We, we beat it. it. Okay, it was on easy. But we, we won't, we won't you know, stick around on, on, that, on that point. We'll, we'll just breeze over that and say we beat the game. We won. Super duper. Tip top. Catch you on the next one. <laughs> so thank you for watching. As always, a like is appreciated. And I'll, I will catch you on the next one. Take it easy.